everyone and welcome back to another IndieX session. I'm Anna and I'll be playing Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley. With me I have Daria and Are. Hello, welcome. Hello, my name is Daria Driver. I'm a senior community manager here at Rob Fury and I have my cute friend Moomin Troll here with me for this stream today. <laughs> Hi, and I'm Artisan Ness, and I'm CEO from Hypergames, the studio developing the game. All right, I, I think we can jump right into the game. Uh, it has a, a cool, very nice intro, so I would like to just show it and let the game just immerse everyone that's watching. And we are also playing it with a streamer mode, which is a, a very good feature. As a streamer, I really appreciate this. Uh, and so it disables copyright music. Right here, there's another music playing if you're not playing with the streamer mode. So if you want to hear that, make sure to wishlist it and play the game when it's released. Uh, so what can you guys tell us uh, about the game? So the game is a, it's a musical adventure game. It's based on the, uh, the IP of the Moomins, which may be known for a lot of the watchers. Um, and... Uh, it's a game about Snufkin, he's this uh, wanderer, uh, he's sort of like, uh, um, he, he likes his solitude as you can see in this uh, intro, uh, but he's also, his best friend is Moomin Troll, um, and currently he's out traveling during winter um, and waiting to return now, so as the game starts you are returning back to Moomin Valley to have Snufkin uh, meet his best friend Moomin Troll there. So that's where the story of the game uh, begins and what we are currently watching. Exactly, and I have a little Moomin Troll right here. This is the one, well not exactly from the game, but still as Ara mentioned from the Moomin characters. And actually uh, the story of Moomin started from the novels and stories by Tuve Janssen, which is a very famous writer that comes from Scandinavia. And here I have with me one of her first books in the Moomin universe called The Moomins and the Great Flood. So if you guys never heard of Moomin, this could be a good place to start, outside of the game, of course. <laughs> and now we have control and we have to search for a friend. The little tears that he has when they depart just it breaks my heart. It is so sad. <laughs> I know, it happens to me every time. <laughs> every time I have to play the game, I'm like, not the intro. It makes me feel so teary-eyed. <laughs> oh. but, but they're going to be reunited, so it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. The whole journey is about it, so... <laughs> Looking for your best friend. And I think that's that's one of like most wholesome and warm parts of the game. That it's about this friendship this warmth that you experience when you're looking for your best friend, so... Mm -hmm. 
So this first section of the game is actually based on a, a short story that Tove Jansson, the writer of the Moon series, uh, wrote about Stafkin and his travels. So it's sort of a video game adaptation of, of one of the short stories that are from the, the, her works. And you can also see like the, the art style that we are going for. Uh, is, is, if you know the works of Tove Jansson, who was like a super talented painter and artist, um, we're trying to sort of capture the 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 mood and the style uh, of the paintings that she had. Yeah, I think we were really trying to make it feel like there is a storybook that suddenly came to life. So you're looking at it and it feels like this is exactly the stories and novels that you've been reading by Tuve Janssen. And the art style is very similar as well, as if it just came to life somehow by magic. How did that idea uh, come to you, like just picking up an uh, already existing character and books. Yeah, I was actually reading one of the picture books that she wrote called uh, "Who Can uh, Comfort Tuffel," um, and it's quite like so sad and, and melancholic story about the, um, a creature who is scared to leave his his house, but but is forced to. Um, and go out and explore the world. Uh, and it really resonated with me at that time. Um, I was reading the book for, for my kid and I really like the sort of dark and sadness of it in, in contrast to the beauty of the art uh, that was also in, in the book. And the first idea was to try to make a game adaptation of that story. Uh, that's different from what we ended up with, but but a lot of the ideas and thoughts that we had initially are still like based on that first uh, experience of of uh, having those those feelings and that atmosphere that we get from from that book. And I think that it's also worth mentioning that you don't have to be super familiar with what moments are or with the stories or the novels. This game is just such a wholesome and such a friendly experience to anybody, honestly. And you can easily enjoy the story and this adventure even if you're not that familiar with everything. Talking about my own experience, I'm not the most familiar with the characters. I know them visually, but I never read anything uh, beyond just, you know, seeing. Uh, and I I connected instantly with the characters and the environment. Yeah, I also found out for the first time about Moomin from my friends from Finland, actually. They were just showing me pictures and I thought that, wow, this was so cute. I have to check out more about it. And then I found the game and everything and, you know, and then I, nothing could ever stop me. So now I have my Moomin, I have the, <laughs> the bus, I have my Moomin mug with Moomin pop as well. And I even have a t-shirt. So, you know, it's going a long way now. <laughs> A true yeah, fan. Here in the Nordics, now like I'm everyone's <laughs> uh, growing up with, like, it's part of our uh, culture. Like, yeah. even, like, I'm from Norway, and our studio is in Norway. Uh, Moomin is is from Finland, uh, but I think for all of the Scandinavian and Nordic countries, like, it's it's just a presence for all our lives. Like, comparable to like Disney in the U.S., I guess it's like it's really big around these mm -hmm. countries. I love his expression. It's so good. <laughs> He's uh, one of those more philosophical characters. Like, this game, uh, what I really like about it is that it can be enjoyed by anyone. Because even uh, when adults play it, they can still see a lot of this subtext that a lot of characters have in their dialogues and their interactions. Like this character, for example. He has a lot to say. <laughs> and uh, on the first glance, it's just rambling. But if you dig deeper, you can actually see the points that he's making, and it makes you think as well. He thinks he's very clever. This character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he kind of is, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we have a new feature. We can pick up rocks and throw them. Throw them, place them. 
it strikes me every time how really strong Snufkin is. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at that rock. <laughs> like, it's enormous. Sure. You can't tell from the looks of him, but yeah, he's really strong, at least in this game. <laughs> looks are deceiving for sure, so... <laughs> He travels a lot, so he, he builds muscle. Yeah. Exactly. He probably went through a lot as well, if you live on the travel all the time, so... Probably has some experience, some skills. Some more rocks. Whoa! Okay, <laughs> didn't crush him. Good. <laughs> I wish he had helped. Like, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> He's just standing there and suffering all the time. Just looking He's at coming us. coming with some <laughs> helpful comments from time yeah, to yeah. time. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Very relatable I, comments, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that uh, the speed of which our character moves it has to do with how close the cursor is to the character. It feels very smooth. You can walk very slowly. Never fast. <laughs> can move. So, how uh, are like the drawings made? Is it all digital? Um, with some like w watercolor tools? Yeah, it's mostly drawn digitally. That's true. Um... And also, a lot of the environments that you see are actually 3D models, uh, even though it's it's made to to feel like 2D drawings and paintings. So, but for instance, this rock you're pushing—that's completely a flat uh, 2D uh, surface with just with just some shader tricks. Oh yeah, I when I played this, I I wondered if it was like a 3D thing and just flattened in a way because you do see it move. Um, that's very mm. interesting. Good trick. But the uh, ground that you're going up on, that's actually 3D models. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> I uh, learn something uh, new every time. There's a lot of um, uh, tricks and, and like uh, mixing different techniques in order to achieve the style. Now we can play our harmonica. A, hold A. Ah. I find this <laughs> moment in the game one of the as one of the most wholesome ones and cutest. Is look at this character. Like he's <laughs> supposed to scare you in the beginning. It's a giant water monster. But this is the cutest monster I've ever seen. Like, can you actually be scared of him? I don't know. <laughs> But now we need more this creature and and most of the other like all of the creatures that we have are are like inspired by drawings by the original author. So that particular one, the sea sea creature, is from a uh, uh, like comic strip that she drew. Ah, uh -huh. that's cool. I have not seen that one before. But like I said, I learn something new about this game every time. I believe there is about there is more than thirty different creatures and inhabitants, right, Ari? There are a lot of uh, of creatures and and uh, yeah. big and small and uh, uh, this uh, area you should try playing some music for uh, the oh. yeah. person the, the creep which not they're called standing love there. the head <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go ah he popped up. He's back! <laughs> My favorite one. I like how he sings this along little as well. Mustache. Yes, yes. <laughs> you had a public demo in October during Steam Next Fest, right? Yes, exactly. And that's uh, the one that you're currently playing. It was part of, uh, of Steam Next Fest uh, with you a couple of weeks back. And how did it go? Did you get like a good reception? Oh, it was amazing. It was so fun to watch. Um, I was sit 
like constantly sitting on Twitch, like watching people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank so, you so much fun. to everybody who yeah. was playing the game and whether you broadcasted it or not. Thank you so so much. We were going through all the feedback. We were like really holding, holding our hands, like in the hopes that you guys will like it. It was such a huge turnout for us and so much positivity. So thanks again yeah. for everybody who played it. It's a really exciting moment for us, being having worked on this for so long and finally be able to share more. That's, that's a really good feeling. How long it, has it been? So from the first ideas, uh, it was like in 2020. Um, but we haven't, of course, been like actively developing that all that time. We have had uh, other games uh, that we were working on at, at the time. But like, yeah, it's been it's been almost four years since we started. And your other games are quite different from this, from what I've seen. Yes, that is correct. Our previous <laughs> title is a game called Merkred or Morkred, um, which is a really dark, atmospheric puzzler, uh, co-op puzzler, where you uh, you need to um, work together with another player and keep out of shadows. But yeah, completely different game and, and art style and everything from, from this one, and we quite enjoy it doing a lot of different things, actually. It's a nice challenge. Yeah, I think it's great that you guys are not afraid of exploring different types, different genres of games. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun and a lot of challenges that we like, of course. <laughs> Regarding the music, you have uh, Sigur Ross uh, making the, the music. Such yeah, a we're good working band. together with Sigur Ross, one of my favorite bands. Um, and uh, we were using, like, for instance, the opening track that you unfortunately couldn't hear on the stream uh, is one of their songs from from their entitled album. And, and and some of the music within the game is is a collaboration between our composer Uda Tilset and. Uh, and and Sigros, where we use uh, their music and their tracks and adapt it in in various like different uh, ways that that sort of like a hybrid of uh, Uda style, which is the music that you're hearing hearing in the background now. Um, so you will be able to hear like new adaptations of uh, of Sigros work and also some of their original tracks as well. That's that's just great. How did did you start talking to them? To, to make the music to be involved. <laughs> oh, it's the spider. I think the spider affected everything. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the monsters here. The monsters stole us. <laughs> Why so? <laughs> but um, this is this is actually one of my favorite stories about how uh, Are managed to uh, collaborate with Siguros on the music. Uh, but there is actually a very almost magical story behind it, uh, which is when um, Are was in Finland. Um, if I remember correctly, of course, when Ari is mm -hmm. back, he will probably correct me a little bit. But when he was in Finland and he agreed with uh, Moomin that he is making, he will be making the game in the universe. Oh. On his flight back to Norway, he was listening to Sigur Ros, and he was imagining all these scenes from the game, how they would look like, what the ideas was, and everything. And uh, he thought that the music that he was listening at that moment, the Sigur Ross music, was really, really fitting. So what he did was that after the plane landed, he literally almost immediately started seeking contact with them and asking whether they are interested to participate in the production of the music for the game. Um, and after being quite quite persistent i believe <laughs> he managed to to get them to collaborate which i think is an absolutely stunning story because we so often we listen to music and i don't know about you anna 
but I imagine myself being like in a movie or like yeah. uh, in a video of, or in a music video, like being super cool and everything. But how how often does it actually happen in life? Yeah. <laughs> like, almost never. So, but he imagined the game with that music and he managed to get them on board, which I think is pretty stunning, honestly. That, that's just beyond amazing. It's a dream. That's true. That's true. <laughs> And it's kind of amazing that Siguros also come from the Nordics, so it's like a joint Nordics yeah. venture. Um, we at Trofury, as a publisher, we come from Sweden, so as Ara mentioned, Hyper Games, the developer, they come from Norway. Siguros is Icelandic, <laughs> and Moomin <laughs> come from Finland, so you can see like, how everybody kind of came together yeah. to make sure that we make the best Moomin game out there. And, the focus on Snufkin, of course, as the wonder of the Nordic wilderness. <laughs> Poor spider, which is bullied. The spider, but yeah. yeah this spider is just so cute. It is. <laughs> Those eyes. Like, they're supposed to be, you know, like, a little bit scary characters in this game, but can you really call them scary when they look yeah. so cute? <laughs> This inspiration is hidden in the bushes. Now I'm just like going through all of them because yeah. I don't want to miss any. That's that's literally what I usually do when I play the game because like they're jiggling in such a funny way. <laughs> like, <laughs> every, like every time I start, like before you even find out about the inspiration thing, it's just fun to go through them it is. and see them jiggle. <laughs> like, yeah, collect them all. More. It's a lot of inspiration. I am have to be super inspired. <laughs> yeah, because there is um, this level system with harmonica, and the more inspired you are, the more creatures will be up to listening to your music. So what would you say is the biggest challenge right now with the game? Um, right now, honestly, we just can't wait to share more news about it. Because, as Ara mentioned, it's been in the development for so long. And uh, now that we are showing the demos and we are participating in the streams, we really just can't wait to share more info some more cool stuff that we have prepared regarding the game and of course ultimately the game itself so i would say this is something that we are working on the most right now but also we are uh, as i mentioned before there are so many characters in this game and we are slowly trying to introduce uh, players to the most recognizable ones or the most peculiar ones because as you can see, no matter how big or small the creature is, they all are very unique. Um, and they're definitely worth checking out everyone on their own. Like the moment when these little guys run at you for the first time, I always get so terrified. I don't know how I am so <laughs> jumpy in a Snufkin game. Like that's not supposed to happen, but that's just how it is. But, and you know, like, they don't look like a huge and very significant character, but they still are there and they still create this tiny, tiny experience that contributes to the overall uh, game. So, yeah. <laughs> I like that they were like the same, but they have uh, a different beak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are like brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. I'm missing one. Mm hmm. Probably hiding something, maybe. Oh. Aha! It is. Oh! Inspiration. Hmm. I'm gonna go back. Do you have any peculiar story um, 
that has happened during the development of the game? Hmm. There are many stories, like one of them was when Are actually came up. By the way, you might want to check some more jiggling bushes in the bottom of this bottom. little valley. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yep. Oh. So, <laughs> no, no worries. It's easy to get distracted here as well because, like, I, for example, when I play, I really like kind of looking at all the detail because the yeah. more you look, the more you notice. And it's crazy how much the artists put effort into elaborating those details so it's just nice to sometimes stop and kind of embrace the scenery all together and look closely uh, but yeah one of the funny stories is uh, when Ara actually um, started having the idea of creating a Snufkin game and uh, as he mentioned before their previous games were very different especially the latest ones, the latest one that was quite dark. So when he came to the studio with the idea, everybody was like, what, a moving game? How did that happen? <laughs> like, what was this? Um, but it was also interesting to see that all these people who, who worked on quite a dark game before, uh, they suddenly became on board with a moving game like very fast. <laughs> yeah, like, sure, no problem, like, because um, um, when you live in Norway, you grow up with the Moomin franchise, and of course, everybody has very warm childhood memories, so it's not, um, it's, it's something that is familiar to everybody, uh, and something that you really want to develop further for maybe um, the people who have not seen it before, or even those who also saw it in their childhood, um, but to kind of remind them of that wonderful feeling. Uh, so everybody was on board with that, after all. But of course, it's a bit funny that <laughs> that, that the previous game was quite quite different. Oh, hey, Ari! Hey, I'm back. <laughs> oh, welcome. So, my computer just completely crashed. For some reason. Oh, sorry about that. It's funny. It happened right when the spider appeared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really yeah. scared of spiders. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about funny or peculiar stories that happened during the development, and I told the story you told me the last time uh, when you actually came to the team with the first proposal to make a Moomin game, and they were like, wow, Moomin game, where did that come from? <laughs> so I told that yeah. one. It was it was cool, and like I think we quite quickly decided that's that's something that we want to try and and um, and went forward and, and made a pitch towards the uh, ip holders uh, and they really loved it from the start so it was quite it didn't take long from the first idea until we were actually started and, and working on this it's a sad part again <laughs> Oh, no, crying again. Where am I? His eyes. Time. Just looking at us. Like, honestly, like the way I, I'll share you something uh, internal that we have here. The way we call this scene here at Raw Fury is uh, find somebody in life who will look at you the way the movie <laughs> troll looks at <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. I like that we've been removing the signs at the end of the demo. Just like, no rules in nature, you know, let us be free. Yes, and that's, uh, that's a trait of Snufkin. He's, he has real problems with authorities and <laughs> anyone trying to limit what you're supposed to be able to do, especially in nature. And so the, uh, the nemesis of Snufkin from the stories is this character called the Park Keeper. And he in the in this game, the park keeper is uh, started setting up parks all over uh, Moomin Valley, and also then like restricting what you are supposed to do. And Slavkin really hates it, and he wants to have nature back as it's supposed to be. So part of uh, Slavkin's quest in the game is to restore Moomin Valley and to its natural state. He's a wanderer. It's supposed to be free, which is 
everything being perfect balance between nature, animals, and him, and other humans, possibly. Yeah, and he, he doesn't like when people try to, like, give places names or, like, uh, tell him what the, a place should be used for. Exactly. And uh, it's kind of crazy that somebody can try to stop people from, like, enjoy... From enjoying, like, smells, like there is a no sign <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, can you really forbid that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite silly. And also in these parks, you have uh, police officers guarding them and making sure that everyone upholds the rules. And uh, so what Snufkin needs to do is to re remove all the rules, remove all the signs from the parks. Uh, once the rules are gone, the police officers don't know what they're supposed to do anymore, so they just leave, which is <laughs> kind of funny, I think. <laughs> yes. Do you know how long the game is going to be? Uh, how how deep are you into like finishing the game? Oh, we're, it's uh, getting, getting close. We are releasing it uh, Q1 next year, so it's not that long. Um, and uh, the game will be approximately seven, eight hours long. It always depends on what kind of player you are. For example, yes. yeah. if if you are like me, which is a person like, oh my god, look at that! This is a beautiful flower, or like this is a beautiful <laughs> creature. Then like it will take me a whole twelve hours, maybe. <laughs> but of and course, the... if you're more, yeah. The area that you're playing now, like the introduction of the game, it's it's quite linear. But later on in the game, you have more freedom to explore various areas, and there are more like side quests and and stories to explore and find. So, you can easily spend a lot more time than than the like the linear um, main story. Here in the demo, we only have the harmonica that will show uh, soon, and we still have two other slots. Will it be like different musical instruments? Yes, exactly. So, so early on in development, we we figure out that we need to have some things to do in the game that's like for other like adventure games, like older Zelda games or something like that. You usually have like weapons and tools, and we of course didn't want to have any like weapons or fighting in this game. Um, and so, sort of the musical instruments are Snufkin's tools, and he can use those in various ways to affect the environment and affect the characters that he meets. Um, and the main progression that character has is like the inspiration that you get, uh, for instance, from the bushes or from help or helping characters and completing quests. You get inspiration. Uh, as your inspiration grows, you you're better at playing your instruments, and and you can you unlock new uh, new things you can do basically, and new areas within the game. Is it complicated to create? Uh like a puzzle or a quest and introduce it in the game? Well, that's a difficult question. <laughs> like making games is really complicated, <laughs> to be honest. It's super complicated. And there's a lot of elements that go into it from like from the story and the art and the and the programming and um, but like we we try to make uh, systems for ourselves that, that makes it not too hard to create. I like quests and content like that but yeah there's a lot of time and effort going into making those systems so yeah the short answer is yes <laughs> <laughs> i could stay here just relaxing near the water just embrace it all so yeah, I would definitely be a player that would take like 20 hours playing this. <laughs> You're like me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was seriously considering at some point uh, to kind of just just film this specific moment next to the waterfall and make a 10 hour version of oh, it. Oh, yes. And then whatever you do, this is always in the background with this music. And this is just the best experience. Yes. Everything will just go. <laughs> I, I wish I had like a, a sticker and an emote, something with just this expression, like zoomed in, just judging <laughs> us. <laughs> uh. 
regarding uh, just general game development, which is like the biggest challenge you think there might be in the industry right now? Wow, uh, that's a big question, but I think there's a lot of uh, changes happening all the time. Like a lot of new platforms are coming up and going away. And, and I think everyone in the industry is sort of like trying to figure out uh, where to go and what to do. And it's really hard to keep up with everything changing all the time. Uh, so I think uh, currently we're in a stage in the business where there's a lot of cool new things coming up and, and um, there's a lot of uh, new opportunities and exploration but it's a, it's also hard to keep track of everything and figure out what to choose to do so i think that's one of the challenges currently uh, from my perspective i agree with our uh, and also another challenge is that the industry is still dealing with the uh, with the outcomes of covid because Unfortunately, a lot of development uh, saw some challenges during the time when we all were on lockdown. Um, and it, it's still, with all the releases and everything, it's still affecting the industry quite a bit. That's why um, so many developers are seeing um, certain struggles with releasing the games on time or releasing the in the good shape. But we are really, really hoping and we are really, really supporting all the developers that in, in the ways that we can for them to release the games on time and also take care of themselves, of course, because after all, it's the people who make this game and they put themselves into the game. So, of course, we care about them as much as we can as well. Yeah, without being okay physically and mentally, you can't really produce a good game or anything in reality. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to the creative industry, because uh, it, after all, it affects your inspiration and your vision, the way you feel, that is. And whether it's art or music um, that you include into the game, of course, it all gets affected. So it's very important to take care of the developers. Is it also challenging to come up with a good balance between what you personally want as a creator, as a game developer, and with what the people might want to play? I think that's often a case for many games. I think, uh, like, I think most game developers they really want to make something that they sort of make for themselves uh, but you also have to make sure that you have a bigger audience and a big mar bigger market in order to be able to to um, uh, keep going as the studio and, and sell games so i think most indie devs are like they're struggling with this balance of like making the things that they just really really want to make and also make something that more people are going to enjoy i think for this this particular game i think it, the the balance was much easier because this this is a game that has a huge appeal and and so a lot of the the um, uh, choices made to make the game accessible sort of feels like the best choice for for the game and also for us as developers as well. So I, for this particular game, I don't think that was a, a big struggle. But in general, I think that's always uh, something we have to have a lot of focus on. Have you felt that struggle in another game you made, for example? Yeah, I think for our previous game, Mercred, I think that was one of those where like we had this like really like the first like that game requires two players. You can play it alone, but you're then controlling two players uh, at the same time. <laughs> um, and and that was sort of like we re that was the idea of the game. Like this is a two player game. Um, and for for this game, we sort of chose not to to um, uh, remove that requirement, even though like it does limit the amount of people who will play it. Like that's the idea of the game. That's the core of the game. So it was really important for us to to keep that idea and not waver away from it. Um, 
and I am happy with that choice. I think that was uh, we're really happy with how that mm -hmm. game uh, turned out. And yeah. And to mention about this game as well, I you know like Anna, it's probably often the case that it's quite hard when there is one successful film or book, for example, to adapt adapt it into other forms of media like games or again movies from books for example as people usually say oh the book was better that movie was not good so but when i play this game like i can't believe how well and how much in the moomin character it is like it doesn't look like something completely different it, it's just like if I, if i was thinking of a moomin game without playing this one i think this is how it would look like and i think that the developers made a very good job adapting uh, the novels and the stories uh, into a game. It just seems so seamless somehow. And it, but it has its own character as well at the same time. It's, it lives alone without someone already knowing the characters and those that already know, it still is very good. Exactly. And I feel that this is balance. It's, this is the kind of balance that is very hard to achieve. So I don't know how you guys I still don't know. <laughs> but that's that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of really talented people involved though. So it's it's been a lot of nice nice work over many years and yeah, it's hard work. But uh, I have so many great uh, devs on my team. So they do all the magic and I I just I'm just here talking with you. <laughs> oh, don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> the master of magic. <laughs> All right, we're not going to bully the spider again. We don't have time for it. So I'm just going to leave it uh, be uh, resting. <laughs> and the other one is going to be stuck there. Oh, never mind. I was so fast. <laughs> I just placed my finger there and it bullied. Oh, well. Speed running. Speed running, indeed. Uh, do you have anything else that you would like to add to tell everyone? Other than please uh, remember to wishlist the game on Steam and uh, follow us uh, to get more information once we have more to release. Uh, where... Absolutely, guys. We we have like things like your daily dose of cute content and stuff like that. But on to, on the more serious side, we share a lot of info about the game as we are ready. So please follow us follow us on social networks and wishlist the game because this is what helps us develop it as well. But thank you so much for being with thank us you. today. Thank you so much for joining in and to showcase your super relaxing and beautiful game. I can't wait to play the full released version and try to just keep nature, nature, without rules, as it should be. Exactly. <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> thank you very much. And everyone that is watching, please stay tuned for a full day of other sessions. This was my last one. I'll see you the next year possibly see you next bye bye everyone